Hey everybody, welcome back to Volvora. Today, I have no clue what exactly I'm going to do, as you might be able to tell by my title. What the hell is even up with that title? Anyway, uh, you might be able to tell by my title that this episode is a little bit all over the place, but if there is one theme to be found in this episode, it is that I wanted to really flesh out and add some finesse to the facades which I planned in the last episode. So this really means getting to the details of these galleries and to these facades and getting all of those hallways in. Also some stairs because the path is quite annoying to work with, especially in the way that it's laid out around the island. And I do want to make sure that that is also hooked into the buildings. So um, it's just a bit of general detailing and working out the buildings on the side here so that once I'm done with these and the buildings are all laid out, I can actually get back into the detailing of the island and of course add more of a steampunk touch to these elements as well. I definitely don't want to forget about that and I will get into the pipes and cogs and all of that steamy goodness at some point later in the series again. But for now I really want to make sure that the buildings are laid out in a good way before we continue. Now a few things that I guess I want to mention about that is that many of these buildings will have a different style and this is also why these things have become so time consuming. I know that in a, an earlier episode I said that I would try to copy things around on the island a little bit more, but I've sort of changed my mind, not entirely. I still want to save as much time on these builds as I can and there are uh, a few methods which I'm using in this video as well to do so. But I do want to make sure that everything on this island has a distinct look to it so that every facade and every tower is at least in some very slight or subtle ways different than the other ones on the island. This should also hopefully help to make all of these galleries and facades look like they're different connected buildings rather than the entire island just being one building with a singular style. And this is definitely gonna end up looking quite messy but that, um, that kind of reflects the style as to building the island that I'm going for. What I just sort of realized is that the way that I am approaching this is very much like a doodle. And in that sense it's very different from my other projects. I am getting into the island without much of a planning anymore because every major thing is already outlined. And a lot of the detailing is really just getting into the game and doodling some stuff as though I am doodling a floating castle during a boring math class. That is pretty much the approach and that is inevitably gonna end up resulting in some of these very random if super detailed buildings and um, also the general way that the series is being built being not so much very organized or uh, very systematic but really just adding fun stuff here and there and that's gonna be the remainder of the episodes as well. The sort of reason that I've shifted into this approach is that this has taken me longer than expected. I mean, things are also gonna always take longer than expected, even if you take into account that they're gonna take longer as expected. But still, uh, I was hoping to maybe finish this in a couple of episodes, but that was a couple of episodes ago, and uh, by this time it really seems like I just want to put this on the back burner a little bit, just make it a fun little project to work on not too much stress about it and just randomly doodle around until we have a finished floating island. Now some of the things that I do want to mention uh, to maybe at least make this a bit more interesting to you is uh, one of the things which I'm doing quite a lot with all of these buildings which is something that I don't think I ever really uh, mentioned before even though I do it quite a lot in my time lapses is sort of copy pasting certain motifs around to make building sites. So for instance, we have the building that I just worked on. It isn't so much the case in the gates over here, but the building which I just worked on, for instance, is really kind of built as a layer of different motifs. The first one just being the wall that I built out of the fountain pieces uh, with some simple borders around that. And basically what I usually do is just get on a single grid and just build the wall that I want to make in a very simple way. Copy that with a wooden post or any grid spawning item. And this is the important part. You want to have a grid spawning item selected as well so that you can copy paste that wall on the grid 
and basically copy paste that around until you have the shape of the building. And th only then I actually made the pillars and after the pillars were done, did the same thing, added a wooden pillar somewhere or a gate, any kind of building piece that spawns a grid to basically copy those pillars as a sort of motif around the building. And the same finally also went for some of the balustrades. And what this makes sure is also that you can always change things a little bit afterwards. So as you might have noticed, I changed the balustrades at the beginning of this episode and uh, all I really did was copied a gate along with my new balustrade, uh, copied that gate and the balustrade around and removed all of the extra gates that I placed as a result of that, which basically makes sure that you can seamlessly copy your like new little addition or your new change to what you already had around uh, without having to worry about the exact placement actually fitting because it's still on the grid and afterwards just remove your grid spawning piece. That's something that I do very often, uh, though I don't, I barely ever really put any attention into how I do it. In some cases, it's a little bit more tricky as I'm still running behind and you might have just noticed that with the dome, I also changed the bottom of the dome a little bit. And this means that for changing the bottom of the dome, I had to use the same technique that I uh, used to make the dome itself, which is the place two scenery pieces on both ends of a wooden post and then remove the post in the end, select both scenery pieces on both sides and rotate the entire thing, if that makes any sense. It is quite complicated, but if you really want to know the details of that, uh, go watch my Planet Coaster College video on domes uh, because it's explained in there. Um, but basically, I'm changing quite a lot of the details which I've made in earlier episodes and by kind of working systematically in that sense, you're at least always able to slightly adjust some of the things that you've built earlier. So that's probably also what I'll be doing quite a lot. Also over here with the bottom of the building, I was figuring I wanted to have something interesting and not just a straight flat wall. Uh, though that said, um, the bottom of the island is currently my biggest struggle because I have no idea what to do with that thing yet. And I might also require some kind of input from you guys on what I should do with the bottom of the island. Right now I am pretty much gravitating toward leaving it rocks and putting shrubbery around it, maybe having some vines hang underneath and kind of decorate it that way. I might also just make it a full metal sort of skin or wooden skin. We'll see what happens with that at some point, but for now I'm trying to connect these buildings as flushly as I can to the bottom of the island and in some cases that really means uh, sort of extending the bottoms outward a bit with these diagonal elements. And I'm also kind of doing that over here in this case, since even these, these walls over here, I did want to have them stick out a bit. I guess I was cheating a little bit with the gallery on the left side here, since I literally copied that from the front of the island, as you might have remembered from one of the earlier episodes. But it fits in pretty much perfectly over there, so I'm still quite happy with that. And I guess the reason that I also uh, want to talk about uh, that I added all of these galleries and these very horizontal sort of elements of buildings on the side of the dome here, is that I also wanted to prevent the island from becoming just a spam of towers. It definitely looks very much like a Disney castle from the front and from the back where all the towers sort of zoom into one line and it ends up looking like a Disneyland castle. But I did want to avoid that Disney castle look for this island as much as I can. The thing is, a Disney castle is just not how a real castle is. A real castle has often some towers and quite a lot of decoration to it, but it also packs some body to it and some actual uh, some actual insights and I have to kind of do that with Volvara as well because I have the coaster running through it and the entire island has to sort of be built around the coaster so there simply isn't any room for adding countless towers and making this island into one big Disney castle because that would just inevitably turn it into a giant mess of towers and that's something that I don't want to do though and that's also why I want to have some of these uh, much more horizontal uh, sort of humble accents in the galleries on the side of the of the island, but also this uh, walkway bridge on the side here, which was quite interesting because I wanted to get away from the standard look that the paths give you, but obviously 
Working around the paths with those curves and with the stairs isn't really the easiest thing. Uh, so this was quite a struggle to get this in, in a way that would not just kind of cover up the paths as they look in game, but also be able to connect this pathway to the rest of the island and at the same time make sure that the coaster could pass underneath it and give an interesting head chopper. Uh, so in the end I just decided to go with uh, a collection of different objects that should hopefully be a bit more flexible than just simple wall pieces. So while the wall pieces are definitely doing quite okay for the straight section, especially uh, with some of the uh, battlement pieces. Many of the wall pieces here are again scenery pieces that are made to be wall pieces because they're much more flexible. And this definitely also sort of, sort of limits your choice as to what textures you can actually use, which can be quite annoying at times, but I would really recommend uh, trying out to make walls ma uh, out of scenery pieces as I've done a few times in this series already uh, since if you really need to they can give you much more like different shapes especially in cases like this for instance I needed that sort of diagonal uh, piece for the bottom of the stairway and there is no such piece in the actual wall pieces but there is the um, there is one of those gothic pieces which does have the brick piece on it, or the brick texture on it, and that is just a standalone object and a wall, so you can actually rotate that in any direction. So you can make a wall out of that, and actually make it diagonal and rotate it in any direction, or even shape arches and towers of it in your own uh, kind of shape and size. So really, making walls out of objects is one of my favorite things right now and there is a lot of potential in that. The only thing I guess that you should be wary of is the fact that they're gonna inevitably add quite a bit of uh, lag to your game after quite a while. Uh, so do be careful with those things and obviously they're somewhat uh, time consuming to make as well but making custom walls is just always quite nice because many of the textures that you do have in the walls come back in some way in some of the objects that we have, obviously to make sure that the objects uh, work well with the wall pieces. But at the same time, this means that we can actually make our own wall pieces and that is always awesome. Though I have to say, yeah, it, it is different from the sense that the walls that I made earlier in this series also kind of used the objects in a different way in that they added textures to the walls that the in-game walls don't have. So some of these towers, for instance, but also the rectangular building over the station building itself are using a texture of the back of a fountain piece because it's a slightly darker grimy texture but it doesn't have a sandstone texture to it and um, it's a texture that you can't find on any of the walls in game but this object does have it so making a wall out of that object sort of uh, fills that lack of a wall with that texture which can be quite handy and you can there's a lot that you can experiment with when it comes to that kind of stuff. And I'm just working on some of the finishing touches of the bridge here. One of uh, my biggest struggles personally is uh, finishing stuff up in such a way that they are actually looking clean and there aren't too many bits that are looking ugly or awkward. And um, I guess just like Bob Ross said, uh, there are such things as happy mistakes no, that wasn't it. Uh, anyway, sometimes a mistake can be turned into something that actually works in the end. So for instance, on the curve of the bridge there, I wasn't able to get rid of uh, like the way that the stones were cutting through each other, but you might as well work with that. At least try to make the entire thing look as clean as possible and go with whatever look you can't fix. And also I wanted to very quickly get into the detailing of the tower here, <laughs> because at that point I was just looking at the tower and it was looking still pretty naked on this side over here and I figured might as well add a bit of detail to that already get into that again and I will be detailing uh, a lot of the island in a very similar way to this just adding a bunch of pipes and machinery especially on the insides though of the castle where the coaster is gonna have more interaction with the scenery I hope to get more machinery and uh, <laughs> machinery. I was sorry. I hope to get more of uh, you know you know steam and uh, cog wheels everything. Hope to get more moving parts and interesting bits to look at. 
but for the tower for the time being pipes and uh, cables to make everything look a bit more gritty industrial and purposefully messy should hopefully uh, work to make it fit in a little bit more with what's around it but then again adding those smaller details are really some of the things that I can only do once the entire area is done uh, because until that point I really want to make sure that the buildings are done in a way that I'm happy with it and that works out before I actually get into the actual detailing of it which is something that I would stress in any case is really important always make sure that you have your general look of the building before you get into the detailing not just because it's much easier to change your building once it's not completely detailed yet and it's really hard to like slightly change the dimensions or the positions of buildings once you've already got everything including the detailing in but also because it can be very easy to lose sight of the bigger picture once you're detailing and this is personally i think one of the biggest traps and uh what makes detailing somewhat of a, a simple thing actually but that one that can be kind of dangerous because looking too much into detailing can just make you lose sight of the bigger picture and end up with buildings that might be super detailed but not fit into the entire sort of picture that you were looking for in the first place and beside uh, another thing that i would like to mention is that there is such a thing as too much detailing there definitely is while this project in itself is trying to go for like that sort of grotesque amount of detailing and ridiculously small things everywhere you don't really notice detail unless there are areas which are less detailed and you see this back in so many things like some european architecture where the walls might be super detailed but then the roofs are less detailed or on the other hand in asian architecture where sometimes the roofs are extremely detailed and fill up a large section of the building with walls that are much more drawn back and less detailed you want to make sure that the details that you do bring in really come out and uh, stick out from their surroundings uh, so not just the amount of detail is important but also the way that you're placing it make sure that there are some less detailed areas and some detailed areas that really draw your eyes towards it. That would be my general take on things. Anyway, with that little sidestep into detailing, I want to conclude this video. So thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video.